welcome back. We took a little break there last week. I think we've been haven't been in here for about two weeks. So uh, it's a weather interruption. I figured, you know something, we're just going to come out here and worship whether it's raining or hot or whatever it may be. We're just going to worship and gather. So I welcome back Cindy and uh, appreciate your gift of music. Now, you never know how that's going to be set up when you show up, So, but I think you've got it just about right. So thank you. Out of the, the psalmist wrote these words, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. You know, these days, there's just so much going on. It's so much uh, unknown and so much going, you know, to uh, so much fear, so much anxiety. And it really behooves me to create a setting where we can put all that aside for a morning. And uh, this morning, the subject's going to be the Word of God. The subject's going to be gospel, the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to pull that out of the parable of the sower. You look around these fields, everything that's green that you see was begun with the seed somewhere. And so even the vine or the uh, crab grass, whatever you may, what may see out there, the dandelions and the weeds, and it all comes from a seed. We're going to talk about that. The prevalence of the seed and how the seed propagates itself and how the seed is, is uh, much like the Word of God. And so, with that, we're under this pavilion. I welcome you to this space. And with that, I share these words with you. Dear Lord, let the quietness of this place, the symbolism of, and beauty and serenity of worship issue into our moral fiber and our ethical stability and strong feeling of justice that, that change our world. We will change our world because God demands no less. Our worship service flows just as it always has from a call to worship all the way to a blessing and benediction. So with that, I will simply lead you in this call to worship, which is the Lord be with you. And also with you. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept our offering of praise, O Lord. Let us worship God. We enter this pavilion blinded by the events of these days, obscuring your hand and your gifts and your blessings, making difficult our experience of the joy you offer through Jesus Christ. Therefore, we enter today's prayer of the day. I will read aloud the words of this prayer offered from our Book of Common Worship. Eternal God, Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the splendor of creation and in the beauty of human life. Touched by your hand, our world is holy. Help us to cherish the gifts that surround us, to share our blessings with our sisters and brothers, and to experience the joy of life in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and holy one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn of praise is one of the most popular hymns in the United Kingdom, the British Isles. It was inspired by an old Irish hymn, perhaps dating back to the 6th century. But since 1919, it has been commonly sung as an, to an Irish folk tune, Slain, as it's called. There's a hill in Scotland, Schlein. The text follows the form of early Christian Ireland, known as a Larica, a prayer for protection. In a setting of clan warfare, you know, way back then in those centuries, clan warfare was prevalent. We can understand some of the military imagery of the hymn. With that, I offer you this hymn of praise, hymn number 562, Be Thou My Vision. Thank you. 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In, in humility and faith, let us confess our sins to God. Almighty and merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desire of our own hearts. We have offered offense against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises. Declare to the world in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful God, for his sake, that we may live a holy, just, and humble life to the glory of your holy name. Let us pause for a moment of silence as we reflect upon those words. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven. And be at peace. Now, let us pause for a moment of... Uh, trying to connect in this socially distanced world that we in, live in, but it's a passing of the peace. And so what I want you to do is I will repeat the words, the Lord be with you, and the response is also with you, but I'm going to go right now, and what I want you to do is turn to your neighbor, give him a wave, give him a peace sign, whatever may be st stirred within you, but I'm going to go, the Lord be with you and also with you. Are there any youth that would like to join me up front this morning? Unless you're related, distance yourself just a little bit. So, let's see here. What's behind me? Piano. The what? The piano. The piano, yeah. What's behind the piano? The field. The field, okay. The field. Y'all ever played on that field before? No. You haven't played on that field before. Maybe that's why it looks the way it does. Well, I can tell you that... What do you think is going on out there? What? Do you see anything out there? No. I see a lot of mowing. I see a lot of stuff. I see weeds. Weeds, that's a good one right there. Weeds. We're going to talk about weeds in our parable today, our passage from Matthew. Weeds. You all have any weeds around your house? Yeah? Mm hmm Yeah. What happens to those weeds? Did they get cut down? Did they get pulled up? Did they get sprayed? Yeah, I figured. Because, you know, something, weeds are funny things. This time of year in, in, in this part of Pennsylvania, along your roadsides, you have this beautiful weed. A beautiful weed. It's called thistle. And right now it's about as tall as your shoulders. And I can tell you it has the most beautiful flower on it. A purple flower. And But the worst thing happens with it is once that flower has died, that ball underneath it is full of what? Seeds, yes. And it actually pops open and throws the seeds into the wind. So then next year, there's even more thistle. Do you know if you clear a field anywhere in the United States, the first thing that grows on that field, if you didn't do anything to amend it, is thistle. Thistle grows everywhere. Well, I'm saying that because you don't have to help it. You don't have to work it. It's just going to grow. It's going to spread. 
And that's the way the Word of God does. You don't have to work it. You don't have to, you don't have to really do anything other than let it be, and it'll spread. But so many times we try to suffocate it. So many times we try to play with it. But you know, next time you see a thistle, it grows about this tall right now, on the edge of the road, remember, nobody planted it there. It got there on its own. And the Word of God has the same strength, same ability. It can get inside you. It can be spread. And all, we have, all we're asked to do is get out of the way. So, are any of you participating with Staycation Bible School? Yeah? Guess what? You made some really cool things, by the way. You made a gratitude jar. And you made maracas. I got some pictures on Facebook, on the Church of Faith page of all those. Guess what? Next, this week, guess what you're going to be making? A prayer angel. And I've got to thank Mr. Crookham. He's made all the parts for this prayer angel. And if you're partic participating in Staycation Bible School, when you pick up your packet on Wednesday, it'll be in there. We supplied you with paint. We supplied you with glue. And... We're also going to supply you, supply you with the words on the front of this. And so for some of you, here sits your windowsill angel, a gentle reminder, reminder to pray. Have you stopped to give thanks for God's love today? Let us pray. pray. Will you pray with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your love today. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Thanks for being here. And thanks for participating in Staycation Bible School. This coming week, we're going to do the prayer angel, the windowsill angel. There's a mobile coming. We're in the fourth week. We're going to, we're going to build a mobile that twists and turns in the wind. And then finally, the last week, we're going to make these bracelets called love bracelets that you wear. Because that's how God was instructed his people is that you wear the word of God and so we thought it'd be make it simple so this week is prayer the last two weeks are love and it's really cool that you're participating with that let me turn on my recorder wherever it may be I have so many pockets up there there it is and uh Bless you. Almost there, folks. There we go. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we turn to your scripture and we look for inspiration of your word, we turn to your Holy Spirit to illuminate the passage, prepare the speaker. Enable the listener for what you intend to say with us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have a Thursday night Bible study that we meet over the, over the internet on Zoom. And there's some folks I see here that participate in it. But this last week we discussed Hannah. Hannah was, it was the mother, was the mother of Samuel. Hannah, up until just... That part of her life, she was she was she had no children. Well, in the Old Testament, whenever you run across that, something big is getting ready to happen. And today, we read a passage about another woman who had not had children. You're insignificant in the, in the, in the land of the Bible. You're insignificant if you can't have children. If you're a woman that can't have children, you're insignificant. You might as well just be set loose. That's what the significance of this is, is that when these women have children, they become incredibly significant. And then God makes them even more significant. But with that, I'll share with you this, the birth of Esau and Jacob, and then the selling of his birthrights. These are the generations of Isaac, Genesis 25, 19. Abraham's son, Abraham fathered Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Padan, 
Aram, the sister of Laban the Aramean, to be his wife. And Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife, because she was barren or without children. And the Lord granted her prayer, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is thus, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. When her days to give birth were completed, behold, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy cloak. So they called his name Esau. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand holding Esau's heel, so his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man dwelling in his tents. Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Genesis 25, 29. Once when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field and he was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stew, for I am exhausted. Therefore, his name was called Edom. E-D-O-M, Edom. Jacob said, sell me your birthright now. Esau said, I'm about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? And Jacob said, swear to me now. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank, and rose, and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. We now move to the Gospel according to Matthew, a reading of chapter 13, verses 1 through 9, 18 through 22, 23. Excuse me. Today's reading is identified as a, the third of Jesus' five major discourses. This one is called the parabolic discourse meaning that it's of parables. Matthew waited until chapter 13 to dump these on you. But uh, we know that not all efforts of ours will result in success. The parable of the, sower, the, of the sower is a reminder that it is our job to work faithfully and trusting the results to God. Hear these words of Matthew 13. That same day, Jesus went out to the house and sat beside the sea. And the great crowds gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat down. The whole crowd stood on the beach. And Jesus told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up since they, did not, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has, has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when the tribulation or persecution arises on the account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful. As, as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He un indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, in another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The title of my sermon this morning is Hope of the Harvest. And the question is, what type of soil have you been? What type of soil have you been? In the parable we read this morning, there are four soils, four soils, four conditions. There's the path, the rocky, the thorny, and the good. The path, the rocky, the thorny, and the good. And those soils, the path is where the soil has been pressed down, where people have walked all over it, and it's just a seed is just going to sit on top of it. The rocky is one where the roots really can't penetrate. The thorn, thorny is where there's competition. And finally, the good. What I find interesting about the parable is that they, they spend time telling us what the path and the rocky and the thorny are, but leave it to us to kind of gather what the good might be. Hmm. Good soil is loose, without rocks, and free of weeds. Well, that's good. Well, it leaves much to the imagination. So, I figured I'd teach you a little bit about soil. Or dirt. That there are, four, that there are three things that you can do to dirt. Janice and Bob Grant, by the way, they know what they're doing out there. Because that's some beautiful plants. I see them work in the soil. I see them work in the dirt. They come in here and they work that dirt long before there's a beautiful plant in it anywhere. And what they're doing is what I'm going to tell you about is that they're helping the soil to hold moisture. They're helping the soil to improve the airflow. And they're helping the soil to be heavy enough to support a plant. Okay? So, you know, if the soil was like loam, no plant's going to hold up. And if the soil is on path, no water and air is going to get through. And, and so when it's, when it's of the type that it can hold moisture, then the moisture and the nutrients stay next to the root. And if, it, if you improve the airflow of the soil, then the roots won't rot. And then finally, if you can make the ground a little heavy, sometimes people do it with sand, and it'll support the plant so it won't fall over as we see sometimes helping the anchorage of the roots. So, but I said to myself, you know, we're the soil of the parable. We're all the soil of the parable. And how might I be able to take that lesson we know from dirt and apply it to our lives? As I said in the parable, the seed, as I explained to the youth, is that the seed is the gospel and the word of God. And if it's ever going to take root in you, we have to think of ourselves kind of like soil, kind of like dirt. So, the three improvements to our soil, our faith, if one values the Word of God, you want to hold on to it, and it nurtures you. If one continues to study the Word of God, not just experience it once like on Sunday morning, but turn to it yourself, that's like improving the airflow. It's allowing it so that your faith won't rot. And if one treasures the Word of God, takes hold of the Word of God, and makes it part of their life, like wearing that bracelet I was talking about, that provides the anchorage of the Word. So, if anything, it takes work. It takes work to put the Word of God inside of us, to allow it to take root. So many of us passively experience Scripture. It's not going to do anything for you. You know? You might, might as well end up with thistles in your faith. Soils are work. And as I mentioned, Bob and Janice Grant right here in, on this, at this table, they, they come in every week, whether it's hot, whether it's raining, whether it's cool, and work that soil. And look what beauty came out of it. It's, it's a beautiful flower garden over there. I get to see it every day. But the thing is, is that the same can happen in us. And when you meet people with beautiful faith, people where their faith just seems to pop out of them, I believe they've done that. They, they have experienced the gospel of Jesus Christ by valuing it, 
by returning to it and by holding it tight. What type of soil have you been? Have you been like the packed down soil of the past? Have you been like the rocky soil, which we have so much of it around here? Have you been the thorny soil, what, like we might find at the roadsides of Allegheny or Beaver or Butler County? Or have you been the good soil? There's good news. As you know, when you return to your garden every spring or your flower bed every spring, Sometimes the soil has just gone back to thorny or gone back to rocky or gone back to packed down. You know, you can return that soil to good with just a, a little bit of work. Because it's, it's typical of us in our walk, of, walk with Christ and we walk with the scriptures that, you know, we come in and out. Sometimes we're really good soil. Sometimes we need to work at it a little bit. But the good news is, God's helping you. Just as God helps that word to spread like seeds, God is also helping you to incorporate that into your life. It is the good news. If you spend time with it, let it anchor within you, it may be amazing what happens to you. Let us pray. The hope of the harvest, Lord, is that whatever soil we have been, that it is our job as you help us to work faithfully. And the good news is the results are up to you. You simply call us to do whatever we can to value the Scripture, to return to the Scripture over and over again, and to hold it tight. And then it comes one day our turn to spread that gospel, to spread that seed, whether it's over coffee, or whether it's over a situation in your family or community. Lord, for those who are ready, help them to see, help them to distribute, help them to then step back and let you guide the results and let it grow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next hymn, Hymn of Response, was written by a man named Ed, Edwin Hatch. Edwin Hatch, he was a Canadian. He was a church vicar and a professor of classics at the University of Trinity in Canada, but he was known for how simple his lessons were in, in class, or how simple that he could drain down any complex theological thought he could just make it so simple. And he took that in the same way and wrote the lyrics to this next song, which they say, as his faith, is as simple and unaffected as a child. As we consider the message this morning, let us also consider the words of this, the air of the Spirit of God working within us. A hymn of response, number 393, Breathe on me, breath of God. seats, seated comfortably, as we remain in our seats, seated comfortably, 
Let us prepare to recite the words of the Apostles' Creed, the traditional version. Christians, what do we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. This morning, I've got some time. This morning, at, before we get into our cares and concerns, I may not be able to hear you from up here, but I'll ask you and open up the floor, as I say in a session meeting, open up the floor, that if there are cares and concerns or thanksgivings, I would like to offer this time for you. Since I can't see your mouths, I have no idea when you're talking. So if you raise your hand, I'll give you, I'll, I'll signal for you to share. But if you have anything to share this morning, Mr. Weatherby. Continuing prayers for John and Susan Loman. John and Susan Loman, continuing prayers. Others this morning? Yes, ma'am. I talked with Dolores Roscoe this week, and she's still not feeling real well, but she thanks everybody for their prayers. Dolores Roscoe. Dolores Roscoe. Others? Dorothy. Prayers for B. Did you say B? B. Mm -hmm. Suffering from stage four cancer. Others? Yes. Uh, Wilma, um, a family friend, she's stage four liver cancer. Wilma, who has stage four liver cancer. Others? Yes, yeah. Bob Bash. And Bob Bash. Mm -hmm. Others this morning? Okay. Let us pray. Creator God, transcendent God. Within the, under this pavilion are all four soils. But it doesn't mean that we've done wrong. It's what happens to us, Lord. But somehow, through all of us, you work miraculously to, toward your goal of the harvest. Lord, as we come into this, as we come under this shelter, as we sit around this shelter. We have shared the names of people who are struggling, who are suffering, who need our prayers. We've opened our hearts. We've shared our cares and concerns, Lord. And we pray, Lord, for all those mentioned, all those unmentioned, and those situations that we're just uncomfortable sharing. May you Make your presence known. May you touch them. May they feel our prayers. Lord, we're needed. May we be messengers of hope. And may our efforts be sure and strong with the assurance that we're not responsible for the results. We're only responsible for our actions in response to you. As we stop for a moment of silent prayer, lift up your prayers to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
And now let us lift up our voices as we pray those words we've been taught to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen indeed. There is a basket on that table, and there are already offerings in there, but that's where I'll ask you to leave your offering this this morning, rather than have us crisscross and interact and break the social distancing. So as you leave, and as you remember, I'll have you leave from the front to the back, from my right to the left, and so therefore, uh, that'll come shortly. But as for now, do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Let us pray. Lord, for those treasures that are dropped in that basket, we ask your blessings upon them. We humbly give those gifts to you that you may amplify them. And for the, the efforts and the time that have been shared by those gathered here, for the running of the church, for the mission of the church, for the spreading of the seed of the gospel, Lord, may you take our humble, quiet efforts and amplify them to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you leave, I just want to remind you of a few things that go on during the week. One is that there I've still got a few slots in the uh, Thursday night Bible study. If you want to join us to discuss characters of the Old Testament. we In the first week we discussed uh, Jonah. Then the next week it was... Hannah, this coming week, fittingly, since he was the son of Hannah, we're going to discuss Samuel. Uh, and, then, and there are so many others that we'll go through. But it's, it's, it's on Zoom, and if you show, uh, show any interest, I'll gladly give you the, the meeting ID and the password, and I'd love to have you. It's a good conversation. It's not mandatory. Attendance isn't mandatory, but it certainly helps if you're there most of the time. But uh, there's a book, but I don't believe you need the book. It's an inexpensive book. But I'll guide the conversation. And uh, the more... I'd like to have about eight people. And we're around five or six right now. So a couple more slots, and I'd but I'd love to have you. Thursday night's at 7. Wednesday night is the time I, I share five songs with you. And uh, sit in the sanctuary with my guitar. Play some songs out of my past out of my, when I was a church musician and so the thing is is that it's it's that uh, it's what I found is it's like a diversion you know it gives a chance for people to remember those wonderful days of your childhood or give you a chance to remember Sunday school or camp or just sit back and relax and forget about all those routines and all the anxieties of the day so I'll be back there this Wednesday at seven o'clock, and that's on the that's you can see that from the Mount Pleasant Facebook page. Um, it's live stream, and then it, once again I remind you of the Staycation Bible School. All the kids are are attending, and I want to once again thank Tim Crookham. Tim, you you're a master, but I'll tell you what I've been in your wood shop. I, <laughs> I don't know how you do it, <laughs> but. His wood shop is full of equipment and scraps of wood and all kinds of stuff. But I tell you what, you, that cross you made for me and the parts you made for the prayer angel, well done, Tim. Thank you very much. And with that, I'll simply say, go in peace, my friends, to love and serve the Lord. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's children said, Amen. This last song, this song will always hang with me.
I, it's fascinating how people are inspired to write these hymns because we think we think of them sitting down at some desk or at the keyboard and just laboring over them over and over and over again. Not so with this one. Kenneth Morris wrote the this song. Well, he he borrowed this song. He was on a trip from Kansas City to Chicago in the late 1800s, you know, traveling by train. And he took a break on that trip and stood outside on the landing during a stop and heard a porter singing this song. And Morris didn't think much of it at the time, as we all do. You hear somebody humming or whistling, you just go, oh, isn't that pretty? And then you just kind of go along the way. Well, as he got back on the train and was traveling to the next stop, it bothered him so much, he just couldn't forget the song, that he got off the train at the landing, waited for the next train that was headed back to Kansas City. I think I told you it's between Kansas City and Chicago got back to where he had heard the song and found the porter, which is remarkable, and asked the porter to sing it for him again. And he wrote down all the words and retained the melody. And here's the song. Hymn number 564. Just a closer walk with thee. <laughs> 